welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And so much going on. Let's start with the news that if or when we get to 5,000 patrons, we're going to um, release on Patreon, but actually not behind the paywall, a new murder mystery Sudoku hunt. Um, really looking forward to that. Um, it's been put together by um, Alice and No Feet McGee and a number of constructors from the Discord server working in collaboration, and I have tested it, um, I think, in a virtually final format, and I think it is very, very good. Uh, not as challenging as, for instance, Matis Martinka's incredible Build Your Own Sudoku, which is our monthly reward on Patreon, but we will need to get to 5,000 patrons. I mean, I do think it's worth it. Anybody who's joined tells us that it is worth it. Uh, the $2 patrons get lots of extra content every month. The $3 patrons get to see videos of us solving some of the extra content and uh, loads of other goodies generally available there. It is worth it, I think. Um, the Discord server also is going absolutely great guns. Last week was a, a week in which quite a few um, constructors had their debut features on the channel and uh, it was a joy to see the popularity of that. And we have continued today our Setters on Monday feature with um, a fascinating video by Lucy Audrin. It's actually on the channel, it's just a quick watch, uh, 10 minutes, which grossly underrepresents the amount of time she put into constructing the two puzzles that are featured. Um, really interesting to see how somebody goes about this business. Um, you know, I'm, I think everybody can learn something from each of these setters, and that's, that's really good. Now, talking of those setter features, um, no, actually, before I talk of those setter features, let's mention the Arrow app, which I believe is coming out on Friday, uh, hopefully on all platforms, so they aren't always all in our control um, all the time. We, we have to wait for this approval process, unfortunately but um, it should be at least sent by then anyway. So we'll see when it hits Steam and Android and the App Store. But yes, going back to um, constructors who have let us into their secrets, this is a puzzle by Turganus uh, called Bermuda Quadrangles. It's not very recent. Uh, it's been around on the Discord server for a couple of months at least. And I don't particularly know why Simon has recommended it to me to do today, but he has. So. I'm going to give it a go and see where we get to. Um, it's a mixture of Arrow Sudoku, so maybe it's to help us promote the app, um, and what's normally called quadruple Sudoku, um, stemming from the idea that the quadruples, they used to put, or it, it was traditional to put four digits in these circles, and then they had to occupy the four cells around the circle. Nowadays, whatever number is in the circle, say that two, must be in one of those four cells touching the circle, and five, six, and seven must be in those cells. Now on the arrows, the digits on the arrow add to the number in the connected circle. That's fairly straightforward. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Do give it a go on the link below the video, and I'm going to try it now and see how we get on. Uh, let's get cracking. And Toganus is always an excellent constructor, so yeah. Um, there's something, there is something that I did notice when I was putting this into the software, and that is that these five, six, seven circles are very symmetrically disposed here. Right, yeah, I do understand this. Um, consider these two, two by two blocks that must contain five, six, seven up here and five, six, seven down here. Now what that means is that for columns two and three we've used up all the five, sixes and sevens and they've been used up in boxes one up here and seven down here. So none of these can be five, six or seven and therefore the five, six and seven in box four is going to have to be in these three cells as a triple. Now that's going to work in rows two and three, rows seven and eight, and likewise in columns two and three, columns seven and eight. So I think I can straight away fill in this old Bermuda quadrangle of five, six, and seven sitting around the perimeter of the grid because of that. 
so down here, that can't be a 5, that can't be a 7. This must be a 1 or a 2 joining them. And that's an interesting start. What else do we learn from that? So this can't be 5, 6 or 7. It has to be higher than those numbers because of that. This could be anything up to 4. Um, ah, OK, right. So up here, those two numbers can't both be 5, 6 and 7. Well, this would have to be at least 12 in this circle, and we can't do that. That would be naughty. So 5, 6 or 7 here. Therefore, sorry, what I'm concluding is that only one of these cells can be 5, 6 or 7, but since we need all three to be in these four cells, two of them must be here. So one of these is 5, 6 or 7. Uh, can't be 7, actually. So seven's definitely in one of those cells. 6, if it was in one of these, would have to go with a 1 and a 2. 5 would have to go with a 1 and a 3. So that's going to be 8 or 9, forming a pair with that. This is going to be... 1, 2, or 3, as is the other cell up here that isn't 5, 6, or 7. Now, we can do the same trick right over here. Both of these can't be 5, 6, and 7, so they're here. I'm beginning to get the idea that I should be colouring here. Colouring, perhaps, in three tranches. So, 8 and 9, let's make them purple. 5, 6, and 7. Let's colour all the cells we know to be from 5, 6, or 7. Let's make them green. And the 1, 2, 3, 4 crowd can be yellow for now. I might subdivide them later. Now, one, yeah, because the reason I was thinking that is because I now see in row 2 I've used all three, 5, 6, and 7. So, in fact, yes, this must be yellow, and this is the other 5, 6, or 7 because it couldn't be up there because 5, 6 and 7 must all see that cell. So that is quite a useful technique. Now, yes, we can do it down here as well. Can't do it over here, but we can do it here. Those two can't be from 5, 6 and 7, or that would have to be at least 11. So these two must be. Oh, this doesn't work quite so neatly this time. Uh, this must be 8 or 9, with 1, 2, 3 or 4 there. Barely able to keep up with the colouring at this rate. Um, so only one of these can be 5, 6 or 7 because of that pair. I don't know which one, but I know that it means both of these must be. Ah, oh, yeah, one of those is 5, 6 or 7. So that now must be 8 or 9, because once one of those is 5, 6 or 7, the three greens have been used up in this row. That has to be higher than 5, 6 or 7. So that is 8 or 9. So these are all yellow. There are four yellows in each row, column and box. Yellow being 1, 2, 3 or 4. Yes, the three greens have been used there. So this is the remaining green down here to... Fulfill that. I haven't managed to do which of those pairs are the remaining greens, but this now... Oh, uh, well, this could be purple. Actually, my goodness, it can't be yellow. I think we've made a breakthrough. We've got a digit. Let me just check this. Yes, four and three the maximum for two yellows, would only add to seven, and that's not possible. So this actually has to be purple, and therefore eight, with one there and nine there, and we are suddenly off and running. Two there gives five and seven. My goodness, I've nearly done all of box eight out of nothing, with no other digits in the, no other complete digits in the grid. That's weird. What a clever puzzle. Right, 9 is 3 or 4 plus um, 5 or 6, not 7. Oh, and there's a 7 in one of those cells, so that's not 7. So there's 7 in one of these cells, and that's not 7. I knew that from this being 8 or 9 anyway. That's how I got there being a 7 there. Um, that doesn't resolve that. 
nine, eight. So these are both yellow at the end of row seven. Um, what else have we got? I haven't used these anymore. Oh, this is... I don't know, could it be a six? No, it can't. It can't be a seven because that sees it. It can't be a six because they'd both have to be five and they are in the same row. So that has to be purple and be an eight or a nine, unsurprisingly. In fact, it's an eight. We know that. Uh, so these are one, two or three and both yellow. Ah, oh, and two purples looking at these two cells. So they're yellow. These are purple. A colorist's dream, this puzzle. Eight and nine there. In fact, we know which way round they are because of the eight down here. Nine, nine. So nine has, ah, nine is in one of these cells by the quadruple clue here, but there's an eight, nine pair, so it's not there. So we can actually fill in nine in this one. Um, and... I don't know. Right, we've got to put one, two, ah. Ah, yes, three yellows already in column five, so only one of those can be yellow, but we must have at least three yellows here, so there must be two there. This becomes green. One of these is yellow and one is green. Um, possibly yellow and green weren't the best colours to choose. Sorry if colour blindness is causing any problems, but at least I'm putting in the numbers as well. Oh, look, this has become a three because it sees one and two. Three there, five there. That sorts out the triple there. Now, are we off with these sixes, fives and sevens? No, not really. Oh, hang on, that's five. That's six or seven now. So that can't be three. We knew that anyway. Uh, no, we're not off with those. We just got a little start. One of these must be four because four isn't anywhere else in this box. And therefore that finishes box eight, three, four. Now we can do a five there. Uh, that looks over here, gets us a seven, five. That looks straight back into box seven. We get a six there, we get seven and six here. Now we know which of these is green because this cell sees five, six and seven. So this one's the green, we can put seven on it. That makes this a one, which is yellow, of course. That's not a one anymore. Don't still know what's going on there. Um, now that's not five, that's not seven, that's not six. Three, one of these is a three. The other ones are from one and two. Ah, so neither of these is a four, are they? Because four is looking down there. So one of these, oh, four has to be surrounding this circle. So that's the four, which is yellow. That's not a four now. Do we, ah, yes, this sees both purples in the row and all three greens in the column. So that is yellow. That's now green. And this must be green. So, can we do these? No, six, seven, six, five, five, seven. They're still not resolved. Not sure how they are going to be. That's intriguing. Now, that's a one or a two. Um, what else have we got here? Four, eight, nine, five, six, or seven. Five, seven, and six there. I don't know how that's working. Oh, two and three are the exterior numbers here. Um, what else can we find? Ah, we've got to put a... F oh, what's going on with this arrow? It's got a five on it. That's got to be here. How have I not looked at this cell before? This has to be yellow. And this has to be purple. But I don't know the identity of either of those. This is one two or four, but since it's purple outside, that, oops, that has to be a four. And that's nine. The coloring's working better than the numbering suddenly. Um, 
That's one or two as well. So eight's out here, and that's purple too. Five, seven, six, four. One, two, or three there. Oh, nine and four are the external numbers here. Right, we can do them, and that's really helpful to the to the color scheme, which seems so vital in this puzzle. Uh, we've got the two purples and three greens in column nine, so the rest can go yellow. Those have become yellow in box nine. We've got one yellow and two purples to go here, but that three says that the yellow, ah, it says that the yellow is in one of those cells, but it also says that that one's the two. This is eight or nine, accordingly, and purple. So we've done the purples and the greens for column three. The rest can be yellow. Um, this has become a three by ordinary Sudoku rules. One, two, and four there. Three, eight, and nine here, although the end can't be a nine. So I can't color those yet. I still don't know. Oh, maybe... No, I don't know how this arrow works. Oh, look, I know how this arrow works. Gosh, missed that for a long time. Two there, one there. Let's have a look at any other arrows. Ah, uh, six on the arrow. That means this is a nine. Oh, that's very straightforward. Right, and it doesn't have a three on the arrow. It has a two-one pair. That makes this a four at the bottom. Um, now, don't know quite what to do with the rest of that. This eight has a two or a three. Can't have a seven here anymore. That doesn't resolve anything. This is one, two, or three. So where does four go in this row? One of those two positions. These two are both yellow because they can see two purples and three greens in the row. That must be purple. That's a nine. This has become a nine, by the way. That's not nine. They still don't know how to sort three and eight out there. Um, Let's see how to resolve that. Right, this one is a known figure. That's a four. That's one or two, so we can place three in row two. That goes yellow. That fixes the eight and three pair down here. Let's do the coloring first and then the numbers. And that gives us a one up here. And this has now become a two. That's a six. Right, we are off again. That's not a two. We've got one and three there. Places four here. Complete the column with an eight. Let's color it purple. Yellow beside. And this must be a two. Nine, four, three up here. Now that one is yellow, so it's not nine. Ah, oh, it's also not three. It's a naked single, finally. So. Three nine pair there, they are resolved by a nine below. That's going to do all our remaining coloring. We can put yellow in those two cells, purple in those two. Finish off the last purple digit, which is an eight there. Now, look, this clue I think is going to be our last disambiguator, this two clue here. That's got to be a two there. That is going to finish off all of column nine, apart from the five, six, seven. I assume that's going to get resolved in a moment. We've got two or three there, so four is finished. Now, that two is looking across at that. Uh, the one here is looking at that. That one places one there, two there, three there. Is that all the yellow done? It is. Just some greens to go. Um, and how... Oh, that six is looking at that seven. So that gets the middle box done, and I think that is going to get us home. Seven, six, five. The five sees that seven, five. One triple left. Six, seven, five. What a lovely puzzle. I mean, not too difficult, but the way it all works together and folds in on itself. And I mean, the colouring was helpful to understand how the 
the biggest digits and the middle digits and the bottom digits work together. Really neat stuff from Teganus, as we've come to expect. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again on the channel soon. Bye, Bye for now.